Israel. We're going to start off this ministry by giving all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh. Bashem, El Shai, Bashem, All right, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And it starts this word in truth and sincerity. All right, and peace and mercy to the whole full elect that are pushing this word across the four corners of the earth in truth and sincerity as well. And as well as you, little man and sisters that believe, peace and mercy to you and your household. So, um, I got a list of precepts that we're just going to go get right into it and see where the Spirit leads us. So, Balzal, can you get me Isaiah 25 and 7? And then uh, Mayan, uh, Obadiah 1 and 10. And then uh, Shama, get the um, Ecclesiastes, or actually, before I get, or you can get it, Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. Isaiah 25 and 7 and he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people oh, start from now, really. okay. Isaiah 25 and 1 uh -huh. O Lord Yahweh thou art my power I will exalt thee I will praise thy name for thou hast done wonderful things uh -huh. thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth I wrote down those counsels that's where you get the book of Proverbs from all right, Psalms, Ecclesiasticus, so also known as Sirach. Those are councils, man. All right, even, even heck, when you go deeper, the very lives they lived was a whole council. You, right? you know, uh, Elisha, Elijah, the, men, the life of the elect is a whole council, something that can be learned from, from each other. All right? For thou hast made of a city and heap of a defense city of ruin. Right, a defense city. That's talking about, first and foremost, America, AKA Babylon, AKA Egypt, AKA Sodom and Gomorrah. Go ahead. A palace of strangers to be no city. Mm -hmm. It shall never be built. Right, you can even say Israel too. Okay, you got strangers in that land. You got, you got those, 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 those Edomites, because that's what they are, that are in that land, aren't the real Israelites. And there's multiple information going into that, man, backing that up. They even tell you themselves. Right, yeah, yeah. the brother went down there and he's, yeah. Right. If the Lord goes as to call them bastards, uh, yeah. that would be 9 Ashtab. and 6. Ashtar? Yeah. Yep. 9 and 6. Uh, you read it. The Lord goes as far as to call those heathens in the land bastards. And if you look up the word bastard, as a matter of fact, if somebody could hold, uh, look up that word, bastard, because it's not just a simple word, okay, and hold it. I have a precept. Go on. In the meantime, yeah. You want to ask a precept? This is Romans 15 and verse 4. It said, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, so that we might, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. That's pretty much what it is. That's right, man. Yeah. Because that's the one thing that's needed. Me too. Patience, comfort, and hope. Those three characteristics are needed in today's time and the, and the times to come. In this society, everything is about instant gratification, instant access. So this society knows nothing about patience, which means going to suffer. You know, when you go back in the old days, you had to, you had to, you know, toil with your hands to get yield for food, you know, to make a living for your family, right? To make a living for yourself. But this society, you get, you can, you don't, you can, you can sit on in front of a a, a, a desktop, work for eight hours and get and get paid. You know, so you're not taught, you're not taught real patience, real work in this society. Okay, does it on that? Yeah. You got definition? Yeah. Okay, this is bastard in the etymology. Illegitimate child, acknowledged child of a nobleman by a woman other than his wife. Uh, Paddle, sorry, uh, pack saddle son. It's hey, going to get up hated. So I love Jacob. I hate you, so since you got that. Meaning a child conceived on an improvised bed. Woo! <laughs> Saddles mm -hmm. often doubled as beds while traveling with pejorative ending. Uh, a barn. Now, when you get it from the blue letter, 
it tells you it goes into ancestral. So those definitions are going into it as well. It's an ancestral, ancestral relationship. Yeah. Oh. That's one of the that's the main one pertaining to bastards in the land. Oh, it's this thing not pure or genuine. Yeah. So our, the child could come by way of what? The father sleeping with the mother. I right. started with the uh, daughter. Yeah. There's also another dic um, dictionary uh, definition out there. It's a uh, fraud, fake, phony. Yeah. Bastard. All right. So Esau had, because he's that prominent branch, I just wanted to bring up the point of ancestral. When you go to the blue letter, when you look up that word, precept, and you have on it, but you're not a, that's the point. Right. And for those who don't know at home, a bastard is a child whose father is a heathen and their mother is an Israel. That's the true meaning of bastards in the scriptures. Right. And I saw Deuteronomy 23, 2 and 3. There's a precept there. There's right. more than that. You should keep reading this. I, I have a precept for that because uh, your brothers are going into that. So this is, um, now I've made a great point explaining that. So this is uh, Leviticus chapter 24, uh, verse, I'll start at verse 9. I believe the point will be made in verse 11. So it says here, and it shall be Aaron's and his sons, and they shall eat in the holy place, for it is the most holy unto him of the offerings of Yahweh Shem Yashiach made by fire by a perpetual statute. Verse 10, and the son of an Israelitish woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel, and this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed, and they brought him unto Moses, and his mother's name was Shilamath, the daughter of Debri of the tribe of Dan. So this is showing you that um, uh, his mom was an Israelite, but his dad was an Egyptian. This was that mixed multitude coming out of Egypt. So that's happening again. You have a lot of bastards among our nation, a lot of tares. So the scripture says, let the, let the wheat and the tares go together. So um, even though, you know, there's a lot of animosity in the camps, right? There's a lot of tensions, and, and it's, it's for a reason, because you have tares among the, the wheat, right? So you may see a lot of, like, uh, discord, you may see a lot of uh, infighting, but that's all a part of it, you know, that has to happen, because Yahweh Shai, at the end of the day, he's going to close the breaches thereof, pursuing to Amo to nine cap. So, uh, read that piece up. Because technically, Esau is not a bastard in the flesh, right? His father was Isaac, so he's not a bastard in the flesh. So when we're dealing with Esau and calling him a bastard, you have to see it spiritually. Go ahead. So uh, Romans 9 and 13, as it is written, Jacob, I have loved, but Esau, I hated. Right. So in today, if your father is not around, uh, doesn't claim you, you're called the bastard as well. So Esau's the bastard based upon the based upon the rejection of the Heavenly Father towards him. It made him what? Not upright. Right? Going back to his ancestor, uh, Esau's ancestor, which is Cain. Right? And that mark was put upon him. Now, read that definition. That mark was put upon Cain, and then that mark followed Cain, all right? back in the reincarnation of Esau because now Cain being the first murderer and liar on the earth at that time he his wickedness needed to be identified forevermore you know go ahead yeah so uh, back in the etymology of the word bastard we go on the last sentence it says fraudulent having a misleading appearance That's why the, the 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 Herod dynasty, those Herods, were playing themselves to be Israelites, to be Jews, because why John High Cranus forced them into what right? Right, because not just because of how he moved, but also because of how he looked. What you would call today a red bone, light skin, so to speak. You know, so Esau is a bastard. Going back to uh, Isaiah 25 and 7, 
He's a bastard because he can't uphold instruction. He can't uphold correction because when he was corrected, right, it, it said that he weeped to Isaac and there was no repentance found for him. Right? And the type of these Edomites, when you correct them, right, they rebel. They get even worse. They get even worse. And a lot of you Israelites have fallen into that spirit. You, that's why you're not also considered sons on this side. All right, the only sons that, that, that on this side are the 144,000 men, and then the rest of the elect with them, sons and daughters. Yes, this is a bastardized system that Esau runs. I just want to be clear with that. When you go back to his philosophy, as you mentioned it, right? He cannot keep the instruction. It's not too plain. That's why I brought up the ancestral thing. Back to the things that he pushed. If you go on, Google it, you'll see it, right? You, uh, you, you can screw your sister, you can screw your mother. Yeah. This guy's all over, uh, all over the place. Yeah. With you. That's why I mentioned that. And that's a, that's a person that's running this earth, yes. right? But he's exposed, right? And again, bastard. You said the bastard society, right? So this society. Son, Yahweh Shai, but also the Heavenly Father, because you can't get heaven or you can't get the Son of the Heavenly Father. Yeah, priest, uh, this is uh, Psalms 50 and 16, because um, you mentioned how our people they fall into that category as well. Yeah, um, right. It's also twofold, Esau and Jake. So this is Psalms 50 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and 16. Now it says here, but the wicked, the most I say is, what has thou to do to declare my statutes? For that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, right. seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words before thee. Yeah. And uh, you see that in the, in the justice system. This yeah. guy will go on the podium and swear on the Bible, when really you're not supposed to swear on the Bible. And then he'll say he'll do everything. He'll swear on the Bible and tell you that he'll follow. And then he'll bring in his lawyers and then create loopholes. And they did it behind the scenes to bring in debt as a as a as a as a mean as a, as a mean of, uh, of money when it's not money. That's heavy, man. You can't you can't do that. The Lord the Lord talks about wages when someone's working for you. You gotta pay for that day. You know. That's the book of James there. It says uh, James five. Seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my word behind thee. When thou saw a thief, then thou contend with him, and hast been partaken with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frames deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's mother's son. And that's uh, that's what you do. That's what you got to do to get a come up in this society. You got to go against uh, the word of the heavenly Father. You want to get really rich. If you want to get very powerful, you got to step on people's toes. You gotta sleep with another man's wife. You gotta, you gotta do a lot of, a lot of filthy, disgusting things. But that's the way of Esau, the devil, right? That's his system. How's it? Let's go back to Isaiah twenty-five. Yeah. Five and three. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. Right. When they, when they start to see, first of all. When these nations see the destruction of America by the way of people and missiles, that's going to put everybody on notice. That's going to put everybody on notice. Why? Because it was prophesied that that was going to happen. You know, it's really big when you tell someone that something's going to happen. Against the wall, right, and that starts with this knowledge, 
right? It starts with acquiring this knowledge. That's how you get a refuge. That's how you get safety, a safe haven, if you will, from what? Esau system, the demons that are out here constantly, day in and day out, plaguing these people. On the way here, we saw this Edomite walking, and the guy was walking crooked, but walking straight, like looking at nothing there. You know, these people that are hooked on drugs, right? The lockdown, that a lot of people have mental health issues, which that term is a long range of whatever to come up with. And you lock these people down, and then what infests them is demons. They don't got the protection of the Heavenly Father. We all went through it too, you know? So we weren't uh, privy of that, but we overcame it. We're not bugged out, but a lot of people are bugged out for those things. Yes, yeah, so it starts with this knowledge, and even worse things are coming than that. The that elder, was light work. The elder always says to me, a plague, the plague of the body. That's it. Yeah, hey, and your brother mentioned bug out. It's funny. Um, uh, real quick, um, bug out. Hey, it has nothing to do with bugs. <laughs> right, it's not nothing to do with cockroaches. They're in a better place. He's talking about that. Yep, the plague of the mind. The Lord has gotten to these people, right? These curses. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. I just got two quick ones. So Psalms 61 and 3. For thou has been a shelter for me and a, and a strong tower from the enemy. Right. And then Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and, are, and is safe. That's right, man. So you're told, uh, yeah, I was going to say, ultimately, you know, when you read that, it starts with the name, right? Teach the name of Heavenly Father and Son. Then what is the name? That's how you constantly run into the name. That's how you constantly are running into a tower for safe haven, day in and day out. You're what? You're applying and you're staying steadfast in your faith, no matter what circumstance you come into. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven. Savior, our Shinawa, our Shinawa in uh, our Shinawa, yeah. right? And it means our Savior, right? right? And it's funny, as soon as you read that precept, I thought of the Lord's Prayer, right? Our Savior, which is our Shinawa, we were going to it. And it's very important because um, that's, that's, the, that's the difference. The Lord's not going to reveal himself to you real quick uh, in, in, some, in some other name. Yeah, exactly. And nobody here can tell, well, not, no, not here, but Nobody here at home who's watching, right? You can't tell me that he revealed himself to you in another name. Right, right. Yeah, because they have the whole 99 name. Right, that's why he never shows himself, only unto his prophets, right. according to scripture. Anyway, go ahead, brother. I got another quick one. Yeah. Come on. Obadiah 121. And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the house. And we're going to our uh, Savior's here in uh, Obadiah as Yasha, which we know was Yahweh Shai. Right. Uh, what is that? Second Ezra 13. Uh, okay, good one. Colossians 3 and 10. And have the image of him that created him renewed in knowledge. Yep. 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 So you get this knowledge. It builds up your faith. It's the experience. But the experience of they don't have faith. They don't believe. That's the word I was looking for. No. <laughs> Same thing. They're yeah. sayers of the word, not doers of the word. Exactly. See, he, has to say, he had to say the word faith twice if you caught it. Those at home. So you can get it. Beautiful point, brother. Also, to uh, just to add to what you said, it says uh, renewed in the knowledge after the image. So if you're not going in the image, the image is not Jesus Christ. That's right. That's the image. So you can't get renewed. Yeah. You're using that name. The image of yeah. the Lord is order. That's right, right, right. That's why it mentions knowledge. That's what this knowledge really does. It sets you back in order. That we fell out of, we go to Jude, right? We fell from a first estate. The angels that fell from first estate. It's not talking about angels. Even today, you still got Israelites. 
fall from heaven to sleep with human beings, right? The Nephilim. The yep. Nephilim. Right? Which means the fall. Yep. And they fell from this knowledge. Through what? By the way of witchcraft? Which is rebellion. You know? Yeah, the wicked philosophy. Yeah, the wicked philosophy. The beast of, you know? I don't know if you brothers were watching what happened into uh, downtown Chicago. You saw the whole incident with Jake. Um, in fact, I see, uh, I think it's 51 and 20. So they're going to be like bulls in a net. Yeah. But oh, it, yeah. it goes into the whole yeah. rebellion because um, what happened last week, um, you had a whole bunch of teenagers, Israelites. They just started rallying up. It was spirits. They had spirits on them. like oh. remnants and pimps on them. And they just started tearing up the whole city for no reason. Like, like it wasn't a cause. They didn't come down to like protest or anything. They just started reacting and breaking things. It, it's very spiritual, brother, because if you know anything about uh, Chicago, uh, I mean, all, all infamous things come out of Chicago. We could go back to Al Capone. We could go back to Prohibition. We could go back to the fact that uh, the military was actually dumping firearms into Chicago so that the uh, the youth could kill each other. And um, just I just put in the chat that, um, and one of the brothers, I think it was uh, the brother Amwan Gabar from New York, had uh, went into four uh, Walmart stores are closing in Chicago. Yeah. Now they'll tell you that it's because, you know, Jake is yeah. in and out in there and, yeah. and stealing yeah. and everything. But we know that something FEMA. major is getting ready to take place. And that's, that's the FEMA war camp. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're getting ready to shut it down and lock niggas up. It just shows you, like, the rebellion because they don't have the law, right? And they're not yeah. trained in the right way because the scripture says train up a child, right? And they're not trained, and that's why they're reacting like that. A lot of them were hot, were, were on drugs, they were, they were drunk, they were having sex on the block, they were frustrated and emotional, you know, and that, that's a bad reflection of the nation and who their parents are. And that's because their parents are not following the law of the commandments. But think of it, man. Think how powerful Jake could be because... You know, all, all, everything that they did to get to that point downtown costed money. You know, you know, you know, to, <laughs> to take the train, <laughs> to take an Uber, yeah. right? To buy the liquor, to buy the weed, yeah. right? To, to do all those things, because you have to buy condoms, you're having sex outside. A lot of you young guys, right? You young women, right? You did all of that, you came together and you destroyed everything. Imagine if you pulled all your money together. I'm not saying you have to be in the truth, but look, you could have done something with that money. Yeah, definitely. But it just shows you what, how our people are thinking, man. They're Destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Look at Farrakhan in the Million Man March. He always says that if you went out there and you just asked one person for a dollar, yeah, where would you sit financially? I can't make it that way. I'm going to tell you what that spirit is. It's called, it's called, it's called self-satisfaction. Get, get a job for yeah, those who can get a job. job. Yeah, but in the same, in the same yeah. token, in the same token, Let's keep it real. American laws are different from here. They're very different. If, yeah, you, if, you're, if you're caught, I'm not, if you're caught for committing a crime, right? You can't, you can't, you can't vote, and you can't get a job. Yeah, if you're convicted, yeah, but right? You committed a crime. That's how it works. Yeah. No, it's not feeling bad. It's just the reality right. because yeah. it's the, because this is the Lord working. Right. Right. This is the Lord crime, working. So, the Lord, how much I said, give on to Caesar. In a crime, and you get put in jail, and then you want to complain about not being able to get a job. Well, you committed a crime, and really, you could. It, it, it's a lot of hoops you have to jump through, but guess what? That's the whole point of taking responsibility for your actions. Yeah. Ultimately, responsibility for your actions, ultimately it falls on Esau, which is why he's at the top of the pecking order. Because he's the one that puts these policies in place that, that makes us have to go out on a limb to do all this crazy things, right? Yeah, he injects us in this. And that's why he's going to be sorely punished for any other nation. We weren't sent, we weren't sent here to punish No, we were sent here for punishment. Even though we want to blame Esau, we were sent here for punishment. Yeah, we were sent here for punishment. So we sent here for punishment. Yeah. Even... Even um, so-called Jacob, the highest echelons, they're still going through the curses too. Everybody's subject to that, and that's something that the elders teach all the time. Just because you go into, you go um, submit to five hundred C one, five hundred one C three, doesn't mean that you're not going to be susceptible to curses either, right? So you understand that it has yeah. to play out this way. Quick, 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 quick precept. This is a Baruch chapter four, verse um, verse one. It says, "This is the book of the." of the Most High and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. 
turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it, walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. So this life is Israel's ruin, because they're in the ways of Egypt, and they're trying to live like, like Egyptians, or American, because they follow their Americanization. They're all into cookouts, or, you know, doing uh, negative things, things of that nature, right? Uh, verse things that are pleasing to the Most High are made known unto us, be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. Verse 6, his point, he was sold to the nations, not for their destruction, but because he moved from Most High to wrath, he were delivered unto the enemies. So he provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils, and not to the Most High. You have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nurse. So this goes to your point, right? So we're here to serve a punishment, and, um, that's it. That's it. Right. Isaiah 25 and 5. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible one shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord Yahweh of hosts make unto all people a piece of fat pig. Of right. Because that's destruction for America. What's going to happen in America is going to be uh, Sacrifice. America's like an altar. I think uh, Isaiah 13 tells you he set up the oxen, he set up the fat, the, the rams, right? So that's going to be a huge sacrifice because how much sin is on the earth? So it needs to be a sin sacrifice. And what, and what, and what, uh, what better people to be a sin sacrifice than the people who brought the sin in? Started with Esau, Egypt, the other nations, and just two third Israelites. Well, when you go back to Cain, the first mur murdering is a sin. It's a difference. When you kill someone, it's in defense. When you murder someone, it's for a cause. So Cain, the Lord put the Spirit on Cain to bring in sin. Right? When he, uh, when he, uh, well, actually, you go back to Adam, sorry. Adam, Adam, because he rebelled against his heavenly father. The serpent, the serpent. Right. He brought it in, actually, according to the scriptures, actually. Because the scriptures tell you that uh, it was he that was first. Yeah, that was first in transgression. The brother said it. was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and a father of it and it's basically what the brother was saying going into that we can't feel sorry for them to the people that have made a conscious decision to do what they're doing and they're being afflicted of it but always keep in mind that there's a master of disaster in place that is inflicting this damage as well and he should never go unpunished he should never go unscathed we should never forget him Oh, the scriptures always speak about him, right? If you forget always. him, you're not. If you forget him, you don't. You're not paying attention to how the David to, to David's hate. Yeah, con, right? Because the scripture says, "Ye are of your father, the devil." And we're going up. We're, we're going into the bastard and the father. Well, he's the father of wickedness, right there, right? Because um, you know, going back to uh, what happened in Chicago with those teenagers, you also have to remember the scripture to tell you the words of Yahweh. Which I said, "Render." if you're in captivity, you still have to follow the laws. Those jakes down there, they were out of line. You don't vandalize people's people problems. You don't vandalize stores for no cause. There was no cause behind that. It wasn't like you, you came out and said, oh, I'm protesting for black rights or anything like that. You just wanted to tear shit up, right? So you were out of order. So if, if you get shot in the streets, good for you. Good for you. Yes, we can blame Esau, but you have to follow the law still. And the scripture says, live peaceably with all men, right? So there's a balance to that. The thirds are going to die anyway. And really, that, that, that situation, that situation, like, you can go into that situation in Chicago and, and, um, and many folks, really, because the society, like, the society you saw is set up, has, has made, like, you just pulled the scripture, the bulls in the net, yeah, yeah. right? Has set them up to be that way, but at the same time, rendered unto Caesar with Caesar. So you can, 
you can see that you can go into manifolds with that, with that, with that situation, you know? This is more of that's going to be happening across states, all over Canada, all over America, all over the world. Right. You and know? that's why we in this truth should be very thankful because we're seeing that it's really playing out with the two-thirds and them in their lot, Esau in his lot, and we hopefully being those elect men, right, are a part of that number where we get saved out of this madness, right? So it's always something to be mindful for and be thankful for. They are, because these niggas is blind. How did you say that? Okay. Uh, Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. See, right. manifolds. And then when you go into a situation, you just brought up the priesthood. Well, really, the Lord did that. The Lord set that up in the spirit. Yeah. Uh, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Thou hand in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Right. Yeah. Just to point out with Esau, because you mentioned Esau. Yeah. You know, did his wicked that's his that's his job yeah and he's still gonna be judged for it so he's yes. not gonna get he's not gonna escape it yeah he's not gonna escape it. Yeah. but israel you didn't have to listen to him that's the point you had the rules right you knew what to do and you did the wrong thing so now this is the punishment yeah. it's very simple and the most high made him go off though. yes he was the most, yeah. thank you brother the, the most, most high made, made him go, go off. off that's why you gotta fear the most high man at the end of the day he does whatever he wants how he wants that's very scary you know Therefore, there shall be seen earthquakes and uppers of the people in the world. Then shall then shall thou then sh then shall thou well understand that the most I spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. So those people they didn't they have focused for a reason. Whatever they had to do, so like he said, the spirit is on the do this thing. So this is not yes. the uppers of the people. Yeah. That's, that's the point. That's right the point right I'm trying to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. These things have to happen. It's, it's for us, for it's for future learning, right? That's what the scripture also says, right? These things are written down for future learning. So you're seeing it play out now. So we have to be mindful and just watch it, right? Because the judgment is already set. Not we can do about it. We can only preach to those who have the ears to listen and the eyes to see, right? That's it. Great shut up. Yeah, that's, that spirit is called the spirit of self-satisfaction. I have to say it because I, I've seen this before, right? I've seen this before, mo hey, mo before most of you people were born, right? It's nothing new, but it's a, a, an old familiar, familiar spirit back here again, and it's powerful, man. The Lord's doing it, right? And he's going to tear shit up around here real quick with that, especially with you uh, wicked jigs, waxing fat. And go ahead, brother, with your precepts. <laughs> Isaiah 25 and 6. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the leaves, a fat things full of marrow, a wines on the leaves well refined. Right. I already, already explained that. That's parabolic for the destruction of America and other parts of the earth. Okay. Again, Isaiah 13 goes into a sacrifice. Right? That's an altar that's and all the people, everybody who isn't of the elect in America hmm. is set up to die. They're set up to die a horrible death. And so right. what? That's right. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. Right. So that started with this knowledge coming out, this truth coming out in the 70s. Right? With uh, Abba Bivens. Right? Which we believe that's Elijah that you read about in uh, is that Malachi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Malachi. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right? So, and in the 70s, there was a lot of movements going on, man. A lot of, a lot of resistance. Right? A lot of black movements. You got Hispanic movements. You had Gadite movements, like Native American movements. Right? So, that started with this knowledge coming out. That cover cast, even, you know, you go into us, you know, being called black, Jamaicans, Latinos, but even the other nations. Chinese, East Indians. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. This is Malachi um, 4, verse 4. It says, yeah. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Herod, for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, 
I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming before the, the coming of the great day, great and dreadful day of the Lord. Right. Power. And that was only 30 years ago, 50 years ago. So you can't say we're not right around the corner, man. He said, coming before the great day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart that's of the right. children to their fathers, that's right. as I come and smite the earth with a curse. That's a great right. thing. And that's Elder Alba Vivens bringing this truth and our, our apostles bringing it out, yeah. breaking it down. You're furthering it because it says you know, the law and the statutes, the apostles, uh, the Lord gave the, the, put the spirit on the apostles to, a, to, to make you understand what the statutes are, the correct breakdowns, if you're paying attention in the spirit. And that's what that's going into, right? And it's, hey, it started with Abba business. Uh, the precept for, for the, uh, what Mayan brought out, because um, it was right along with it. It's what the precept I gave you yesterday. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is uh, Matthew uh, 11 and 11. It says, Verily, this is the words of Yahweh Shai. Verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Wow, that's heavy. It is heavy. Right, yeah, so even when in the kingdom, when we get there, uh, the, the, the lowest Israelite, the lowest stature, he's going to be greater than John the Baptist. That speaks volume because John the Baptist was great. Well, he, he heard the way in from Yahweh Shai, and he did many great things. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven sufficeth, I'm sorry, suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. What's the kingdom of heaven? Us. Actually, it's the elect. Really, it's starting with the elect. The prophets and the law prophesied unto John, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. The reason why I bring this up is because it says here, and if ye will receive it. So it's, it's not about you accepting John for John. It's about you really accepting his message and what he's bringing out. Because a lot of people can debate and argue that Abba Bibbins isn't John. Yeah. A lot of people do do that. They're still, they're still questioning that to this very day. But just don't look at Don't look at him. Just look at what he's teaching and what he's prophesying. You know, look at what he did. You know, it falls the same works as what John, John did, did in the past. Exactly. Right? So <laughs> You're led right back to the person. <laughs> yeah, that goes into the breakdown. That's, a great, great that's, point. that's what's being broken down. Hey, that's what's being broken down to you, right? It came with the apostles. Yeah. It's the statutes yeah. of those laws that was given, yeah. the divine laws, and the statutes are divine. Everything is divine, the Lord. But it was given to the prophets, yeah. starting with the apostles. But hey, it's on you, man. Go ahead. Okay, come on. Come on. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Yeah. And violence is by force. Yeah. So what was that? And I said to Israel, I just said he left. Started with the Israelites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it started with the Israelites. Yeah, you can look at that Daniel 7 and 18. It says the saints of the Most High will take the kingdom. The saints starts with the elect on down. Right? Right. Isaiah 42 and 1. Though you once knew this, mm -hmm. because when um, Brother Kabar was mentioning Abu Bivens, you know he was preordained. The verse up says that some men are preordained for for, for unrighteousness and stuff like that. Yeah, that's right. crazy. So we 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 all were preordained. We all already knew this. So he was put back. The prophecy said so to play that out as it says. I will therefore put you in remembrance though you once knew this, how the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them that believe not.
veil too strong. The blood of the veil covers things. It covers the face, right? So this this truth, because this society, this system that we live in was based upon lies, established on lies, right down to the core of it. Everything, man. Because the father of lies is really rulership. Before this truth, we were living in La La Land, in a dream, in a nightmare, not a dream, a nightmare. You know, the Lord has woken up many, but only few are chosen. You know? Yeah, a lot of lies out here because um, it starts with the prophets, the men of the Lord coming out here, removing that veil, that covering cast, by pushing the truth. But also, even in the world, you have uh, guys like Edward Snowden. Uh, you have Julian Assange, they're coming out and exposing the works of Esau, Edom, and these other nations, right? So that's all taking down lives, you know, that's all set up by Yahweh Bashin Shai on the left and the right. To get certain information now, because it's supposed to have to be noted. We can go into the articles, break it down, and then bring out the ones we would And that's true too, but this information. Now are coming up and hitting the yeah, Didn't Turkey's internal minister just say that, that everybody hates America? Yeah, 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 everybody yeah, hates America. Yeah. Ambassador, get your filthy yeah, hands off of us. It's going to come from everywhere to hit them too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just say that uh, Satan be against Satan, how can his kingdom stand? And now, evidence. Exactly, it's evidence. The precept. This is Jeremiah 16 and 19. O Yahweh, my strength and my fortress and my refuge, and the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth. I shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things branded as a prophet. So, um, all the lies are going to be washed away, especially in the end times, and especially when the Lord comes back. They're going to realize they were they were lied to, these other nations. Because that uh, says, uh, Psalm 2. Psalms chapter 2, it says, um, why do the heathen rage and imagine a vain thing? Part of them raging and imagine a vain thing is because they've inherited lies throughout the generations, throughout the centuries they've been here. They were lied that uh, they were lied to about how um, these so-called Jews over there in, in Israel today, the Khazars, they're the real people. And now when, when, when the Lord comes back and then those who don't get delivered, they're going to be in awe and in shock. Right? They're going to realize they yeah, did, did, uh, did, did a wrong thing in destroying the Lord's people defacing the name of Yahweh Hashem Shai, pursuing the wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter. That's it. Right? And the other part of that lie is, uh, uh, Vocab Malone, he's the leader, is that Esau is going to inherit the kingdom of Jake. That's the other part of the lie. Well, you're going to inherit slavery. Wow. That's what you're going to inherit. They're covering the veil, too. I mean, uh, that's why you said it's also going into um, New World Order. That's what you think. Thinking that yeah, you yeah that's what, yeah, 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 that's what the breakdown yeah, that is. One truth. Man has never told one truth. That's what that's what I'm into. Simply put that father. Father lies. Why would you need a so-called white person on the planet anyways? Right? That was an indication, an indicator of sin.
Is this the man? chapter 21 yeah. verse 1 and it says I saw a new heaven and a new earth mm. and the new means renewed right. everything will be renewed right. we'll go back to the fresh refresh we'll go back to the natural state okay. and we're okay. talking about Con. for the first heaven and the first yeah. earth were passed away and there was no more sea Con. Con. Yeah, that's the start of the change well the, yeah. the change has already started we're rehearsing it but the brother's going to read yeah, a precept because yeah. we're singing right real quick <laughs> You got it? Yeah, read it. First uh, Corinthians 15, verse 51. Yes. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible... Go ahead. white skin, is that? And who made that leper? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, who made the leper? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So, uh, so the right. point is, right? So, what what are we going to be changed into? I, I mean, how can you uh, authenticate that? When, when did that ever happen before? We, we had many examples of the change, right? Yeah. Like, oh, when the leper. because it's a type of it's a sin but the point is when he was resurrected the scripture declares right he also his sacrifice had to be accepted it's just a i'm just saying it that way because he, he, he uh, went up into the chariot he ascended up in the chariot yeah. so the point is we're going to be changed like him that's the point yeah, everything it's really simple him. yeah i'm saying like you say he's the pro uh, he's, he's a prototype. prototype he's a prototype right. even even right down to the point Everybody. that when he was risen on the third day People came out of the grave and went back. So just when he has, comes back, beautiful. The elect will come out of the grave and they're gonna go back, right? Right up into into the church. So everything is patent after you have the scriptures are patent after you have a shot. That's right. Beautiful. So, Simply put. That's why when you get a dream sometimes of I, I mean of Jake, I'm talking about Jake. If you get a dream sometimes, I'm talking about a, a, the men of the Lord, the family by faith. Right. The person in that dream. It could be a mother. She, they look glorious, yeah. right? Yeah. Full, fully melanated. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Anyway, I don't want to. I've heard those dreams. Yeah, no, but he's got a point. Let him finish his Go ahead. Have a question. Yeah. So I was reading last night, and it says that all spirits go back to the other side. They go back to the first place, right? But then when the hour side comes, it says that the dead in Christ will rise first, so they're going to come up. The spirit is going to be put back into, into those bodies and they're going to come right out of the grave. That's what she's saying. But the most high is going to send the spirit right back to the body. So when the Allah has time to come, and he's going to come, the most high is going to send the spirits back into those bodies and come out of the graves. Right now, they're there up there right now. They're not like the spirits are chilling in those bodies in the grave. Right. You know what I mean? You see that? More detail question. I got one precept for you. This is um, Hebrews 12 and 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? So the Father of spirits is talking about the Heavenly Father, right? Now, yes, because Yahweh Shai, you know, he's going to do all that. He, he, has, he has the ability to control life and death. Because he's able to, uh, I believe that's in the book of Revelation. Uh, yes, it says he's, uh, he has the keys of uh, yeah. Yeah. But um, that's because when you go back to Isaiah 9 and 6, he has all the titles of the Heavenly Father. So it's full. Right? To answer your point, yes. 
we do go back up. Our spirit yeah. go back up to the Lord. It's in joke. Yeah. yeah. So, so you said that. Um, you said no, that. Um, John the Baptist, and then you have um, 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 Abba Bibbins. Yeah. It's three different bodies, right. one spirit. Right. Which which body is the spirit going to go to? Because that's three bodies. Well, the last one he died in. Okay. Yeah. It won't come up at, it won't come, like, yeah, the last one he died in. That just makes sense. Changed anyways. Yeah, okay. it's gonna, yeah, I know. Matter. It's just different. No, it doesn't really matter. matter. No, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, he'll, uh, he would come back in the uh, in, in Abdul's body. Oh, okay. That's the last body he was in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't want to. That's a fair question, though. That's a fair question. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, so he'll come back to the last one. But you gotta remember, your body's just a vessel. I know, but yeah. what, what, what I'm saying is, there's three different vessels. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 That we know of, that we died last year. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, we understand, I understand yeah. what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. First conditions, yeah. right? Like the yeah. genealogies and stuff, you have to yeah. be mindful of those things. But it's a fair question, it is. You're curious about Let's it. Let's go back. Uh, it's finished, Oh, uh, yeah, we'll ask. It's finished? So, okay, who has uh, Ecclesiasticus? Ecclesiastes 3.15. You got that? Ecclesiastes 3, verse 15. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be <laughs> hath already been and the Most High requireth that which is past. Right, so this society, Esau has made people in this society to think that the Heavenly Father is not gonna judge you for your past life. You know, and that's, and that's contrary to the scriptures. Even Christians believe that the Lord won't judge you for your past life. If, if the Lord said he keeps, can you read that again? Ecclesiastes 3 verse 15, that which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. Right, so the things that we read about in history, in the history of the scriptures, in secular history, is all happening again now. Okay, go ahead. And the Most High requires that which is past. Right, which makes sense. That would be a just power. Right, he's a human parsing of the past. That's why we're in the fucked up condition that we're in as a nation. Right, because when you go back into the scriptures, which these scriptures, that's that's our historical book. Right? You go back to the scriptures and you see all the rebellion all right, that we did, that we committed against the Heavenly Father. All each each one of those uh, rebellious acts are sinful. Each sin has a judgment. He told us in John 28 what would happen. Chapter 15 and so that's why Esau has the whole world believing that you're just here, here and now. One life to live, he calls it? One, YOLO. Yeah, yeah, YOLO. There's no statue of limitations on all the wickedness that Esau has done. None. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It'll never be done away with. He has to be recognized. Yeah, there was a soap opera named One Life to Live, man. All them Jake women used to love that. Go ahead, brother. Is there a point there? of judgment the wickedness was there and the place of righteousness and the place of righteousness that iniquity was there yeah and that's the earth right this place the earth with where judgment is played out on. right a lot of you christians from my personal experience especially you pastors i would i would ask you before i came to the truth why do the lord is perfect and he's just, why do babies come all fucked up if they're innocent? Right? That was the one thing they could never, they would always dance around or tell me 
you know, that's not for me, or this, that, and the third. Right? But that's why. Because we're playing out judgment on earth. The spirit that's in that vessel is playing out its judgment on earth. Yeah. Sorry, brother, could you read that one more time, what you just read? Uh, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, okay. that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. Oh, okay, yeah. And I just want to also add, you know, iniquity is there, which is which means um, people being in the condition without having the law, right? So that's what Israelites are doing. They're playing that out. A lot of Israelites are just walking around not knowing that they're going off, thinking that it's okay, right? But just to go back, with, just to go off of that precept, because the brother made a point about um, finding fault, right? About why did the Lord put us here? Why are we in this condition? A lot of people ask that question in the church, right? So it says here, Romans chapter 9, verse um, 18. Yeah, and the point will be made in 19. Therefore hath he had mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, whom he will he harden with. And th that goes back into the past. You know, he hardened the heart of Pharaoh to keep us from being delivered. But that was really to show his power in the long run. So a lot of people will ask, yo, why would the Lord do that? But you got to think about it. You know, the counsel of the Lord still stands at the end of the day. You can't change that. He can do whatever he wants. He right. sets up good and evil, right? But what does it lead to? It leads to judgment and righteousness. In the end of the day. Verse 19, thou will say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? So he created me as, as the way Esau will say. Why did he create me that way? And why does he find fault in me? Well, I just told you, you know, the Lord, his counsel still stands. He set you up to be that reed, that vessel of dishonor, just power and what he can do, right? Uh, and it says here, for who hath resisted his will? That's right, nobody can resist the Lord's will. If his will is to make you to be a damn devil, to be a leprous dog, and you're going to die and perish forever, that's his will. If you're set up to be a glorious vessel, and you're going to inherit all things, that's what it is for you. I can't question that, right? I can't question that. So people in the church, they're trying to go into the mind of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. When that's a big no-no, just stick to what you know, which is really the scriptures, right? Uh, Joel 4 and 7, remember I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or right. where were the righteous cut off? Exactly, at the end of the day, it's still just. Uh, you're not going to get uh, a, a rough judgment if your leg didn't cut off, or getting hit by a car, and that person is innocent, or a baby coming out blind and deaf, and all kinds of things. Is unjust Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and so with You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's exactly what he said. Yeah. It's cancer. The Lord's counsel will still stand. By the blast of Yahweh they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. So it's an easy thing, man. It's like, like the, the character most high you have to understand. He he is the judge. And a judge can't waver in emotion. Oh, well, I kind of feel bad for you, you know, whatever. You know, when it comes to mercy, he, he does have that favor on the elect. And that's just how it is. That's why we're fighting tooth and nail to, 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 to prove, or to, to, you know, to more willing that we're of the elect. Right? But when it comes to the matter of death, the Most High doesn't flinch at that. That's, that's nothing. That's the, really objective. To expound on your point, it's true. The, the mercy that we have is right here. He's given us mercy in these scriptures. This is the mercy. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You just said work off your debt. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 5. And it says, The just Yahweh is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning does he bring his judgment to light. Ooh. He faileth not, but, un, but the unjust knoweth no shame. Yeah. The also says that, because you're saying death, right? Yeah. This is the death that belongs to the most high. Right. right. So that's why everything is so life. Hmm? No, I said and life. Yeah, life. life. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Same thing. I see it. Yeah. 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 Right. That's something real quick here. Uh, this is 1 Kings 22 and 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of Yahweh. I saw the throne. I'm sorry. I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne. And all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand 
and on his left. So that's right hand side, left hand side, good and evil. So all the host is talking about all the angels in the spirit realm. So you had demons and angels. Verse 20, and Yahweh said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramath Gilead? So this is the counsel of the Lord and he's asking the angels, who shall fall? You know, do you guys have a suggestion? And the Lord will do that sometimes. Sometimes he wants to hear what you're going to say, but he knows what's going to play out because he sees it already, right? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. So they are agreeing, oh, let me do that. I want to do this. I want to fuck this guy up. I want to do that. Because that's how spirits are. They want to jump on people, yeah. right? Verse 21. And well, there they came... want to please the Heavenly Father. Of course, yeah, of course. Right? yeah first and foremost. But they want to jump on people because that's their job, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's their job. Yeah, you know, their spirit's job. job is to jump yeah. on that guy and to change the outcome of that person's uh, uh, life. Yeah. So it says, verse 21. Yeah, I, was just like, I was just saying that because you're right, it's their job. But we have to remember they're the powers of the Heavenly Father. Their job is to serve the Heavenly Father. Of that's course, why they're in excitement like that. Yep. It's all him. Obedience. All him. Obedience yeah. And there came forth the Spirit and stood before the Lord, Yahweh, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in his mouth. Yeah. Okay, so why was he a lying spirit? Let me ask you guys that question. Why was this guy, why was, why was, why did the Lord choose this lying spirit to go on Ahab and his prophets, Ahab's prophets? Why? Okay, so the Lord, he gives you up to your own vile, vile affections. When you go back to Romans 1, I mean, I think it's Romans 2, you gave them up to their own vile affections. Yeah. So if you're going off, you give you the left-hand side to play out judgment. So a lot of people in the Christian church, they'll look at it, oh, you know, the Lord's evil. Why would he make him just go off like that? He could have just changed him. Well, he was wicked in the beginning. So you know what? I'm going to give him evil and see how, how it's going to play out and not, how it's not supposed to be. Right? So you want, you're want you going to learn the hard way. You can either learn on the right side or you can learn on the left side. Either way, you're going to get judgment and you're going to learn what's not right to do, what's wrong to do, what's wrong to do. <laughs> because you know why? Because you know, in the end of the day, we're coming to a time where a lot of people, especially you as well as you Christians, are just going to learn to fear the Lord. You're not going to question why. Because again, he, he said that, like the Lord said, he gave him up to the vile affection. He gave him up to the vile affection follow affections in them. They get to play a, a, a role. For the most times, the scriptures say his thoughts are not our thoughts. We don't know what he has planned for the rest of 50, 30, thousands of years from now. We don't know that. So when the Lord decides to do the put the spirit on someone to do that, it's because it's a part of a larger movie that he has planned out. Thank you. You know, but that's why this is merciful because we have a fear to just understand that. Just do our job. That's what he told us to do is to prophesy and teach. Right. A lot of people you can't like that's a hard thing to, to grasp. Very hard to grasp. Man, I mean, come on, man. We're, we're sympathetic and empathetic, man. We'll stand here and say, you know, Jake, you're so fucked up for doing that shit. Because we feel for you. Sorry, brother. Because we feel for Jake. Right? The scripture said that uh, Yahweh doesn't want any man to perish. Yeah, no worries. Uh, it says, and the Lord Yahweh said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Right? So even the prophets, they can get caught up into this. You know, they can be given a false dream to tell the wicked king that he's going to prevail even though he's not. That's right. So that also shows you, you don't just trust in the prophets. Going back into what we spoke about in Matthew 11, don't worry about John. If you can receive it, you can receive that it's John. Just worry about the message and see if it, if it filters through through the scriptures. That's all you got to remember. So this, this teaches you a lesson on who you really got to follow, right? And it says, um, and, he, and he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also, go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, Yahweh hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Right? That was the point. And that's why it's important about the statutes, because you said the statutes are the breakdowns. But if you have to receive it, that's that's the whole point. So a lot of coming, come, oh, this is the law, this is the law, the law, the law. The law. Yeah, but what is the breakdown of that law? So, right? The guy's telling us that, uh, hey, John the Baptist is not a, not a man of the Lord. Okay. All right, let's see how John the Baptist lived, because exactly. he already mentioned it. Exactly. All his life, exactly. his whole life, exactly. the prophets are, the Lord raised them up for a special reason, and the rest of the elect for a special reason. And they were from the foundation of the world. That's one of this one of And him knowing the spirit and the power and the truth. Yeah. He still humbled himself and shy and said, I'm not even worthy of what with the, the man that I'm baptizing is capable of. I can't even 
they to shoot. Yeah, the breakdown. That's how this is going into the breakdowns. It's very important to understand the breakdowns, right? Because they're the statutes. They come from the prophets. Starting with the apostles and others on that. Go ahead, brother. Uh, the scripture back it up. You got all the Turn it up. Second uh, Ezra 8, verse 21. Whose throne is inestimable, whose glory may not be comprehended, exactly. before whom the hosts of angels stand with trembling. Hey, Amen. Oh, wow. The fear of the Lord is deep, and who the host of angels stand with trembling. Man. So they're like they're like in a ten hut in order. What do you want us to do? What do you want us to do it? You know, and like when you when you get deeper understanding of the scriptures, your fear of the Lord goes way up. Because everything is centered around him, everything is centered around his sanction, good or evil. We're all called, we're all hoping we're chosen. You know? I got a good one, I guess. Psalm 7 and 11. Yahweh judges the righteous, and Yahweh is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. Yo, so. Someone get Second Maccabees six and start at twelve. We're gonna read that and then we're gonna read. We're gonna read that piece. Um, Psalm seven and twelve. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. Right. Start from the top. Yahweh judges the righteous, and Yahweh is angry with the wicked every day. Right. So keep that in mind. He judges the righteous, which is the elect. Right. And he's angry with the wicked every day. Keep that in mind. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. Right, so if you know the, the sword, you know the bow goes back to the missiles. Right, the only salvation from those missiles is by the way of those chariots, the vehicles of heaven fun. That's how you escape that judgment. But in Revelation 18, it says, Come out of her, O my people. You know that starts with this first. And then it, it translates into a physical departure. Now, get the second Maccabees. Start at 12? Yeah, start at 12, yeah. Okay, second Maccabees 6, verse 12. Teach those that read this book that they be not discouraged for these calamities. Right, because you gotta start from one to read the book. Oh, okay, okay. okay right. so you have to hear the things that were happening, and that goes back to the Lord. Okay, 2 Maccabees 6, verse 1. Not long after, this is the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of the Most High. And pollute also the temple of Jerusalem and call it to the temple of Jupiter Olympius. And that in Gerizim of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in the place. Verse 3. So desecrated the temple. Go ahead. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. Right. Verse 4. For right. the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. Right. And beside the brought in the things that were not lawful. Right, so it was, there was all kinds of level of wickedness happening in the temple. Prostitution, eating of pork, orgies, all the erection of a Olympus, a Greek god, all kinds of wickedness, right? Remember, the Lord is angry with the wicked, but he judges the righteous. Every Same shit day. that's happening in our temple. Exactly. Every yeah. day. Yeah, 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 Same yeah. wickedness, same unrighteousness. Yeah, because you still got some men that are not, you know. Well, it's in Israel, right? Oh, are you talking about the physical land? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, well, yeah, yeah. No, well, not only the physical land, but on a spiritual level, because the body of Israel is still a temple, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You yeah. still got men that, yeah. yeah. Right? And so them two-thirds yeah, is the ones that are going off and doing all this craziness that the brother's talking about. Yeah, right? and that's outside the temple. That's outside, outside of the temple. The temple. Right, but yeah. outside of the temple is yeah. the temple. Right? Yeah. It's the temple. It's still yeah. Still of course. Uh, verse 5, and it reads, The altar was also filled with profane things, which the law forbiddeth. Neither was it lawful for so a man. So we know those vain things are, are, are unlawful animals on the altar. That's what you put on the altar. Uh, 
probably got statues, little statues of different gods on there too. Yeah, little figurines. Little yep. figurines, yeah. right? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, neither was it lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath days or ancient fast. You can still go to Turkey and buy little statues if you're, uh, uh, what do you call it? Someone who's traveling. Like a tourist. A tourist. If you're a tourist, you can go to Turkey, you can, buy, you can still buy a little artifact of uh, Artemis, yeah. the temple of Artemis in Ephesians. Which, one, which was a huge temple, oh. right? They say it was like a football field long, two football fields long, you know, and like one football field wide. Is that yeah. the name of the Canada the space program thingy? Probably. Artemis? Artemis, yeah. Probably. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Greek, yeah, Greek, yeah. Greek god. Yeah, yeah it's the Greek god of yeah. fertility. That's right. Which goes back to rioting and reverie. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Queen of Heaven at the end of the day. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. 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 No, that makes sense. Well, yeah. different name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Different name, same bullshit. Same bullshit uh, dealing, yeah. Verse 6, Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient fasts or profess himself to be a Jew. In the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought to bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. Right. And when the fast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Right. Verse 8. Oh, Bacchanalia, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 A lot of you tribes are into that. Yeah, yeah. This great data. You get that from the so called way, man. Carabana, Carnival. Yeah. Over there in Brazil. In the islands, we do that too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. They That's call it Bacchanal too, right? Yeah. yeah. Juve. Yeah, Juve. Yeah. yeah. You can celebrate, but we're going to buy you out, then you got to do it this <laughs> way. <laughs> Right? Yeah. 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 So imagine back then, back in Alia, they were doing, they're going to do it naked. Sorry. Back, back what? Back in Alia? Back in Alia. Back in Alia. Dionysus, I think, is another name for him. <laughs> this guy's like, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, verse 7. In the day of the king's birth every month, they were brought to bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the fast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled the to feast. go in. The feast of Bacchus or fast? Oh, it says fast. Oh, is it? Fast yeah, of Bacchus, right? fast of Bacchus oh, okay, was kept. Oh. The Jews Same were compelled to go yeah. in procession to Bacchus yeah, carrying right. ivy. Yeah. Moreover, yeah. there went a decree to so the that neighbors. Ivy goes back to uh, so the time. Right, Nimrod, Simiramis, and Talmus. Okay, so you had that ivy painted around him. Go back to Christmas, St. Nicholas, right? Go ahead, keep going. Okay, verse 8. Moreover, went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and to be partakers of their sacrifices. And whoso would not conform the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death and then might a man have seen the present misery right Virgin. And, uh, yeah, and, and that's coming that's happening again that's gonna happen again right it's gonna happen again because it goes back to what uh, new world order right the, the M-A-R-K right? or the part of crap the cram. yeah you call it the cram yeah, yeah, or I call it the cram go ahead Okay, uh, verse 10. For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children, right. whom when they had openly led round about the city, the babes handling at their breasts, they cast them down headlong from the wall. You see that? So the women were keeping the laws, sacri uh, not sacrificing, but circumcised their children, and this, these Edomites were told to toss them over the wall. Get the fuck out of here. Toss them right over the wall, man. We're, we're, we're not doing any of that. No Israelite custom, no laws over here. You know, it's all Bac it's all Bacchus, Olympus, all these other different guys. Jim Jim well that comes a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes a little later, but yeah, Jim knows, yeah. Go ahead. And others that they that they had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly being discovered by Philip were all burned together because they had made a conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. Right. So again, man, we're, this, the scriptures say that um, the George E. Heavens, Revelation 12 and 12, the devil knoweth that he has a little time, 
they come upon you with great wrath. That's coming again. What we're reading, man, it was the breach. And this will be time seven, which is completion. But this time, beautiful on this side. He mentioned about the feet, about the Sabbath day that day, right? Isn't there a big squabble right now with you dummies Sabbath that's day. talking about the new moons? You don't get it. New moon and the, uh, and the full moon, and the full right? Moon. In Israel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that, man. I've it's prophecy that. within Israel, yeah, yeah. right? On, on the most wickedest yeah. days, but here comes IUIC. <laughs> Passover. Yeah, and, Passover. And, and, yeah, and you yeah. wicked men that still talking <laughs> about the full moon versus the new moon. Yeah. The new moon is going to the Sabbath, right? Yeah. Hey, and yeah. the feast. You were really a tap off, man. I'm going to go there, but finish it up. Okay, uh, verse 12. So, you know, the Israelites, remember, the Lord judges the... That's just the righteous and he's angry with the wicked every day, right? So you're hearing about judgment upon Israel. But the Lord is the one who sent these Greeks to overtake us, yeah. right? This is the Maccabees, mm -hmm. the last revolt of the Israelites, really, before we get into the Roman Empire. What? Okay, verse, you verse 12. Now I beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged for these calamities, right. but that they judge the most, that those punishments not be a to not be for destruction, but for a chastening of our nation. Right. Read that again. Yeah, yeah. Read it slowly and oh, okay. get into it. <laughs> Accentuate the word. <laughs> now, I beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged for these calamities, but that they judge those punishments not to be for destruction, right. but a chastening of our nation. Right. So when you, you go into all the wickedness and the judgment the Lord has put on us as a nation, you got to see it from the context, from the perspective and narrative of a chastening. Getting whooped by your father. Wow. Because you're not listening to his instructions. <laughs> he cares about you. Right? But Esau is for, is for destruction. Now, even when you go deeper, the destruction of, of two th well, the destruction of uh, two thirds of Israel, that's also chastening. But they're gonna come back, you know. So technically, it's still not unto destruction. But they're gonna come back to perfection. So go ahead. Okay, uh, verse thirteen. For it is a token of His goodness right. when wicked doers are not suffered any long time, but for with punished for not as with other nations whom the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, patiently forbeareth to punish till they become yeah. the fullness of their sins so did he with us right so basically if you can understand in living terms the most high it says, it says take it as a token the word token goes back to the sign when you see that the most high is jacking up Israel for their wickedness and then you see these other nations, starting with Esau and the heathens, they keep uh, mounting wickedness upon wickedness upon wickedness until the world still hasn't done anything for them. Is because for them, it's going to lead up to destruction. It's a chess move. You send them up for a huge fall. Right. But when it comes to Israel, you don't want to wait that long for that. You want to get right on them because that's his children. That's a beautiful thing, man. It's called nipping it in the butt. Nipping it in the butt, right? Yeah. Getting it right before uh, it starts, uh, before the cancer cool? starts to metastasize. That you was, want to get it right away. That was for you. Eating the That's what I got. <laughs> you have it too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Right. <laughs> because sure. sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Set up to be evil. Put it in their heart. Well, it seems like they're getting away, but they're not getting away. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's why I said it's a chess move. Yeah. You finish it? That was, uh, that was verse 14. Let me keep going. Uh, you can go to 15. Okay. Verse 15. Lest, lest that being come to the height of sin, afterwards he should take uh, vengeance of us. So he doesn't even let us get to that height. Because then you have to do away with us. <laughs> Yo, that, you gotta really take that in. That's crazy. That's a, like, but Esau's sin has has not has has no, reached onto heaven. There's no sin or there's no ceiling there. So it makes sense for him to just be destroyed. 
I don't know about you brothers, but anytime I do something that's off, I get the punishment right away. Howard does not wait with me. Does not wait. I don't know. Just look back at your own, reflect on your own, your own being. Examine yourself. Has Yahweh let you get away with a lot of things and not get punished for it? Come on, man. Come on, man. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Yeah, man. I'm honest. Anytime I do something wicked, I get it right away. Hey, man, you know, I was telling a couple of weeks something happened to me. And I was telling my woman, it's one thing to be like, you know, to go off and then to not know when you're going to get judged, how you're going to get judged. That's, that's terrifying, too. But it's another to go off and the Lord put the spirit to tell you this is how I'm going to do it, this is what I'm going to do it, and this is where I'm going to do it. And then it happens. That's another thing to be fearful of too because it just shows you couldn't do nothing about it. Even when you were given the information on what was going to happen, how was it going to happen? Yeah. You're a complete it. robot to the Heavenly Father. The program is built to us. The program you can do exactly as he has his fit. Jonah? No, it was a Job. No, I'm talking about Jonah when he was in the... Uh, Ah, oh, in the well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 trying to run away. He's like, yeah, yeah. I already know. Hey, yeah, it's going over. Yeah. And that was crazy because it was a huge, it was a huge storm. Yeah, they're out there in the middle of the sea. Yeah, you already knew. In a huge storm, this man had enough faith and fear that he'll just toss it over. I know it's me. <laughs> and would any of us do that? <laughs> Lord Willoughby would. I love it, right? Yo, Lord Willoughby would do that. Yeah, I'll see you guys later. I'm not going to tell Kevin Quad. Anyhow, but that was. Finish yeah, up, that was uh, 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 verse 16. And therefore he never withdraweth his mercy from us, and though he punish with adversity, uh, yet doth not he never forsake his people. Yeah, man. Hence the remnant, starting with the Alishai, right, David, right, the 12 apostles on down. Yeah, beautiful. That's a powerful scripture. You see the word mercy, right? Yeah. So... That precept, that last precept with the word mercy, how would you relate that to it? How, how would you relate that to yourself? Because that's what we're going into, ourselves in the terms of how we've been led, right? And that's the Ahawashad, right there. Our Savior, the mercy, never took his mercy away from the elect. Right. They're always work, he's always working with them. That's what that's talking about, spiritually, right. if you can feel it. That, that and, mercy I look at, because I, I think of, um, he died on the cross and what happened in the, the temple when the veil was split in half because when that veil was split in half it gave us more of an insight into the spirit realm and like what's going to happen and what's going to play out in the future that's a form of mercy you know? right, right, yeah. the veil was rent oh, yeah. 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 he was always there right? and you know um, also you're saying mercy makes me think of uh, the Lord is still merciful because you have the spirit of fear Remember, when as soon as that spirit of not fearing him, is, uh, 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 of fearing him, is off of you, that's it. You're finished. Yeah. You're yeah. finished, man. I know every brother. Uh, that piece is popping in every because, brother's mind, right? You know, now. because when you go off, it's like the difference between having the spirit, the fear of the Lord, is when you go off, you're condemned by you going off. You're sorrowful. You're broken in spirit, like, and you're afraid, like, you know, I should have done that. Whatever is going through your mind. When you don't have that. You just go off and you just continue. Oh, or, or you make excuses and try to justify yourself. That's also lacking the fear of the Lord. And the scripture said the elect women justify themselves. If you're not a judge, how can you justify yourself being a corruptible man? And, and you're you can't standing, save yourself. Yeah. Exactly. You're standing against the counsel of a perfect being. I got a quick precept. This is uh, Genesis uh, 25 and 27. And uh, it says here, Boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. And uh, obviously, it just tells you the characteristics of Esau, which a man of the world going into, he's a man of the field, and that Jacob is a plain man, which when you go into plain, it really means a person with morals. He's a perfect, complete. Perfect, one who lacks nothing in physical strength, beauty, sound, wholesome, hey. complete morally, innocent, uh -huh. having integrity. Shalom. Uh -huh. That's Jake. So, you know, um, when, when they do something wrong, they're thinking about it. I got a quick one. Uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 1. The uh, point is in 2. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy, 
having their conscience seared with the hot iron. Just going into what the brother was saying. If you're at that point, so like that scripture, you know, that they, who, who knows the name of the most high, time, and I was drifting far and farther away from it. Absolutely. And I was start doing fashion shows at, 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 at the Passover. Like, it's, it's clear, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. because your conscience is your moral compass. That's right? right? It's That's what keeps you in tune. Right. Right? So once you start veering off, of, yeah, it gives you in the right direction. So once you start veering off of that, oh, and to the point where you know you're going the wrong way, and you have no problem with that, imagine your woman say, please, could you go to the store for me, baby? And you go to the store, and you know it's the wrong way, and you just keep walking, and you keep walking. Come on, man, what's going to happen to your home? The worst That's thing crazy. is to make right? excuses for your actions. Right? right? You, never, you never really should be making excuses. If you, if you want to apply wisdom and humility, you got a precept just to back that up. Below. Genesis 39 and 9, going into what we're going into, this goes into uh, Joseph on how he felt about uh, sleeping oh, with his master's wife, right? So it's uh, Genesis chapter 39, verse 7, and the point will be made in uh, verse 10. Uh, it says here, And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. <laughs> but we saw him, he had a six pack. Or her man was shaped like a bag of laundry. If you want to know. Well, they were in shape. Verse 8, it says, But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wanteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. So we really thought about, you know, his master took him in, fed him, clothed right. him, gave him all these things. Sure. You know, a nigga don't think like that. Right. Right. A person with, with no morals thinks like that. Right. Right. Uh, verse 9, There is none greater in this house than I, neither have he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against the Most High? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not. So he kept, she kept coming back. back and I want you to give me it. I want you to give me it. I want you to give me it. And he still kept his integrity. Yeah, and so he had morals. Yeah. To lie by her or to be with her. And that was it. Yeah. 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 So Rock 32, verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse Right. According to his will. Right, right, yeah. right. That's it. That's what I'm saying, man. You can't be. You can't. You don't want to give excuses when you're going on. You know. And even as simple as like you were supposed to be there or be at a, a high holy day at a certain time because you were in charge of some kind of preparation of it, and then you were late. You're better off just saying, you know, Salake, you have forgive me, and moving on. Even if you might have a legitimate reason. Why that applies humility and faith to the Heavenly Father to justify it. That's good reason. Really no, some, so sometimes you're traveling. Uh, sometimes sometimes you're traveling and you'd rather, uh, you know, there's there's a long way and then you'd rather take the shortcut. But you know, there's an old saying that shortcuts draw blood, right? And so, so sometimes you have to be mindful of the way you're going, right? It may look easier to do, right? It may, it may even feel like the better way to go, but ultimately, right? <laughs> Never veer off your moral compass, man. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you always get the woe is me demon. Oh, I'm catching too much hell, so I can't serve the Lord good. Right. But you know, that's a part of this walk. You're supposed to be afflicted. That's a part of the fiery trial. Right. That doesn't give you the excuse to go off either. That's right. right. Exactly. Right. That doesn't give you the excuse to not teach his word. Right? That demon stops us from making lessons. Right? You got to be doing lessons, man. Like, if you're... Like the false heart is set it straight and forward. If you've been in this thing for six months and over, it, it makes no sense to be not doing lessons. Or a year and over, it makes no sense not to be doing lessons. Man. Because guess what? You grow, you, you grow by teaching as well. You know? So, and this this is a job that was given to us from me, how much we shine it through. We're, uh, um, what's the word he gave me over the week? Um, It's not custodian. That's but what it's stewards. Oh yeah, uh, stewards. Stewards. Like, yeah, yeah. Stewards. we're stewards over Yahweh Shai's word. You know, so you're supposed to go out there and do the work and teach this, teach this truth, so the elect can get it. And that's how you show forth your faith. You can't get caught up in the woes of me spirit. You're not doing lessons. 
I got a quick one. You gotta one. remember you how was shy, man. You gotta remember you how was shy. It's a lot here, brother. I got a quick one. Second Ezra 16 and 76. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord power, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Right. Yeah, get over it. Move on, get over it. Come on. And yeah. in the same token, it means to be balanced, to stay temperate, right? Understand that, yeah, you're still in this physical flesh. You are subject to sin. Right. Hey, quickly, read that again. Unless you got something. Read it again. Yeah. It's so powerful. Second Ezra 16 and 76. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord power. Yeah, that's, but, that's the part you want to have a burden. Uh, burden you in spirit right right yep <laughs> you know so in that should words, be get, the focus get, get, yeah. lo get lost you know beg the lord to let you get lost in that go ahead right read, read, let not your sins weigh you down yeah, we don't want that part right <laughs> well we've all been through that yeah, and, and the lord pulled you out of it he put you in it so you can get experience yeah. of what that's like and he pulled you out of it it's training yeah experience is the best teacher huh yeah. Uh, take my yoke, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I was thinking right. of that scripture when that's been read, so that we can get the balance. Right. Right. The Lord's yeah. given us the balance. The balance, yeah. Yeah. You have some? Go ahead. Okay, this is... Oh, this is... No. Okay, so this is Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times. Seven times goes into completion, many times. Right. As much as the Lord permit. And rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Right. So, you know, a just man's going to fall all the time, but you know that just man is going to be pondering on what he did, and he's going to make it right unto those to the most high. Right. So he's going to pray, he's going to fast, he's going to go out there in faith. And it says, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Yeah, the wicked they're not going to regard, so they're going to fall into mischief. They're going to be caught into that snare, that pit. Right. Which goes into uh, if you look up the word mischief, it goes into evil time. Because that's, in the end, we're coming to a time where the doors are going to be shut. So if you're not practicing these characteristics, right, these Beatitudes, but also the scripture talk about them being Beatitudes, the fruits of the Spirit, you're not applying them. When mischief falls upon the whole earth, which is an evil time, you're not going to find any salvation or any perfection or protection or divine instruction. Because we're going to be, some of us might be on our own, some of us might be with other brothers who knows what the law is. But you want divine instruction, because we're outcasts. And we know that the end of this society is destruction anyways. Well, remember the scripture says, endure, endure as a, a soldier, right? In uh, the New Testament. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're going to have to deal with uh, the adversities. Look at our forefathers. They were always by themselves. Jacob was by himself. He saw I was looking for him yeah. to slay him. Right? Mm -hmm. He's still on that shit until he, he, will, he he's lucky that the most had mercy on him. But, you know, that's how the Messiah is, that's how he works with Jacob, if you yeah. fear the Messiah, yeah. right? Yeah. By keeping his law, statutes, commandments, the best of our ability. Yeah, that's powerful stuff, because individually, collectively, that's how he works with each of us. <laughs> so he set the example with our father, Jacob. We're not always around no. each other. You have your own, uh, your own journals, your own destiny, right? Uh, you better come through this narrow. But yeah, well, we're all all connected because we come to a one agreement of serving the, yeah. the highest power. Right? That's right. That's right. Serving Yahweh, Yahweh, uh, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai. That's right. That's right. You got to go through the door. That's right. right? Yeah. One on one. Narrow way. Go ahead. I'll read the scripture. Oh, I'll read the scripture for you, Elder. Um, Second Timothy two and one. I'll start there. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. Right. And it said, be strong in the grace of Yahweh which he has given us, which is the time period to get right. Right? Yep. So it, it, it further to further the point of not letting your sins weigh you down, you don't have time for that. Ponder on it, yeah. you know, uh, uh, correct it, and move on. Yeah. Right? Uh, who shall be able to teach others also? Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Oh, right. That, because this starts spiritual. Everything is spiritual before it's physical. So if you're in this truth, you're given this knowledge. It makes us like you don't. You want to look past the flesh in your sufferings, right? In your dealings with with, uh, with people scoffing at you, 
you gotta see that as being spiritual. You're, you're, you know, if your woman's uh, uh, giving you hell, family members giving you hell, you even gotta suffer among the brotherhood. Not everybody's spirit here is, is, is like certain brothers' spirits operate different from your spirit. Doesn't mean that brother's wicked, but you gotta suffer him too. You know? That's right, bro. Yeah, that's right. Bro. Yeah, that's right. Man was marrying Israelites that were getting killed. Right. And then the man that got uh, bird shit in his eye, yeah, and right. he went blind. Damn, all types of shit. Yeah. Yeah. And he was doing righteous to do that. Right. Burying Israelites that were right. that were wicked, whatever. Burying. Right. Also, also, when you go into soldier, just in solitary, you know, so it's a lonely walk too. You're on your own. You have your own cross to bear. So you can't just fall up, fall on the, the shoulder of another brother to carry you. It's not going to work because he has to carry his own load. And so who's going to carry you at the end of the day? It's the Lord. He gets you through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what the brother was mentioning. It was Jacob and uh, the Amisha. Yeah, it's a narrow door. I'm just saying because I, I have a cousin. He's in the military, right? And uh, he was telling me, man, and, and he, when he was in Afghanistan, it was like at, at any moment he could die and nobody was there to like be with him, you know what I mean? So like there was bombs dropping on where he was like sleeping and he had to just deal with it. You know, he, he had to just fall asleep even though bombs were dropping on, dropping on him. And you know, when he came out of that war, you know, he had PTSD. But he told me, man, I was, I was, I was, I was by myself. So that's you enduring hardness as a good soldier, man. You know, demons are going to come at you. You may try and explain it to brothers. They may think you're bugged out. You may, you may have, you have, may have done, you have, may have done acts of spiritual power. You may have to keep that to yourself. You know, All right? So things like that. And also strive for masteries. Yet is he not crowned except he strives lawfully. Right. There's a way. There's a way to. to a way to suffer. Yeah. Right? There's a wrong way to suffer, there's a right way to suffer. Right. We've, we've been given the instructions right, to how to strive for the mastery. Which evidently that mastery is getting changed. That Paul talked about in the church of the Because at that point, you're changed, you're being up in the church, that's it. You're, 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 you're at that mastery. You're perfected. Right? That goes into the understanding of the scriptures, going into the statutes, which is the breakdowns. Right, your behavior and your conduct outside of that too. Yeah, yeah, is that it on that? Yeah. You had some riddle? Yeah, it was uh, Proverbs 10 and 21. It says, the lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's deep. And that day's coming. Yeah. Because yeah. it says it's going to be a crying wine in the streets. Come on, come on. <laughs> Not yeah. the dirty wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, that's right. Because yeah. you know what? A lot of people strive, think striving for wisdom. It's one more precept. Uh, they strive for wisdom, thinking that, that you can do it for yourself, that you of your own power can gain it. And that's why they die for wisdom. The fools die for wisdom. Because the truth behind wisdom is that it's given to you. The Heavenly Father gives it to you. Fear. Yeah. Right? It, it starts with the fear. That's why you get it, because you reckon you acknowledge him. You fear him, you acknowledge his ways, his laws, and then you start to be acquired with fear. And with a, wisdom. And a good example of that is these uh leading authorities, no matter the facet of industry, they think themselves of high mind and, and high place when really they're fools. The true knowledge is here. The true knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is here in the scriptures. Come on. It ain't with them. Come on. And what greater way to show for the Lord to show them that than, than to have men like us, yeah. mean, like mean men, you know, to them, poor men, poor men yeah. right? Acquire this truth, break down, starting with uh, Abba Bivens and the apostles on down. And these guys spent millions, billions of dollars on concealing this. Yeah. Yeah. And just men, you know, in the spirit. Boom, 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 boom yeah. breaking it down, telling you that, guess what, you're going to lose, you're going to be in slavery, this, that, and the third, in your kingdom. Yeah. You think that's going to happen in our kingdom? <laughs> and we didn't have to spend $100,000 or go to Harvard for four years to get that exactly. either. Exactly. Okay. Right?
Oh, the blessing of the Lord, blessing of the Lord, it make it rich and have it, uh, no sorrow to it. It is a, it is as sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding has wisdom. Yeah, man, fear. You know that you're gonna get caught, even if you're going off and you, you keep going off, you're like, oh, okay, it's been like a week, two weeks. Yo, you know, you know that if you have fear of the Lord, you know he's gonna get you. But like, he, like the elder read the precept to, to a wicked man, mischief is sport, it's fun. Yeah, look oh, at Esau. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter, tells you that. Let's use them like we, like, like as if we're in our youth. Let's go all out on these guys. They want to say that they're the sons of God and that we're wrong and that they're righteous and we're wicked. Let's go all out. Let's see if the Lord is really going to help them. We, we've read the records. We know that, you know, some uh, are uh, in the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, we burnt some of them. We destroyed their temples. So let's see if really the Lord is going to back them up. Uh, that happened with Samson when he got caught by the Philistines at the very end. Uh, you know, they made, a, they made a sport out of him. And then, you know, the funny thing is, yeah. at the very end, he called upon the name of the Lord. And then the pillars came down. And the whole facility dropped on him and all them Philistines, man. Yeah. So, hey. And they plucked his eyes out. They plucked his eyes out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dressed them up, made fun of them. Yeah. Uh, shaved his head. Yeah, shaved his head. That's right. Okay, so I got three seconds. Oh, this is Roman. Right. Like, yeah, I just have oh, okay. um, one more. One more. All right. Yeah. Uh, one more precept. The fear of the wicked. I mean, the fear of the wicked. It shall come upon him. But the desire of the righteous shall be granted. That reminds me of Revelation uh, 13 and 9 and 10. Right? He that leads in captivity shall go to captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. The, the main fear of these devils being put into slavery under us. That's their number one fear. But that's going to come, that's going to fall upon them. Right? And it says what the, the, the roughly perverted, the wanton, the just. So what we want to do is we want to rule in righteousness. We want to get out of these bodies. We want to get our, we want to get slaves of Esau and the other nations. All those things are going to come to pass. Yeah, because your this body's in prison. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. This is your own self. Yeah. yeah. Your individual self. Like changing the darkness bound to flesh. Right. right. Yeah. Change the darkness bound to flesh. Yeah. So I was out here um, doing the chemtrails, fucking uh, mess up with tap water and all of yeah, these shit. Sure. Um, getting at these souls. Uh, what else is in the fucking water, man? It's like sure. micro nanoparticles and all of that shit. Yeah, fetuses. Like, you have to wake up every day to a fucking prison. Yeah, yeah. fetuses yeah. In, the, in, the, in the soda. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The kidney of fetuses in the soda. Yeah. yeah. Endless. Yeah. Endless wickedness. And then there was a thing I had put in the chat about how, like, people took the jabby jab. So they got the jabs, right? And then um, now 500% of people have HIV. Oh, yeah. yeah, they yeah. Have, yep. they have <laughs> to, 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 to go along with their uh, stroke yeah. symptoms, yeah. go along with the numbing of the hand, uh, and on and on and on. You can list That's thousands scary, of stuff. Yeah, that you people really are fucked. It's going to get worse, man. Mm. Well, I wonder what's kicking uh, Jamie Foxx in his ass. I would think he probably got that Dr. Jab, too, and, and you know, it's fucking him over now. I think somebody probably put a spell on him, because um, I don't know if he's seen the thing that the elder had put up about how um, people sacrifice, like even Gad. They've been doing it with the kids and shit. Mm -hmm. There's real shit that are out there. Women do that but, shit. Yeah. Like, the other part of that is that they're saying now... Women love that type of shit. I know certain women that do that. Yeah, they're saying now that um that he's no longer with us. That's what they're saying about Jamie Foxx because they actually went into the news. I don't remember who, which one of you brothers I'm speaking uh, with about. They went in the news. Now, never um, in mainstream media do you hear them talking about a movie being shot and, oh, we're just using Jamie Foxx's stunt double now to complete the rest of the film, right? So for those who have eyes to see which who's the stunt double, that means he might really be up out of here. Yeah, yeah, they right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, that's a, I was just thinking that. Yeah. 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 All the different clones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, clones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Attack Ten of the hundred. clones. Mm -hmm. um, I want to address your point, uh, point on wisdom because you went into it, right? You, 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 you can't, you can't conjure her up. Um, wisdom of Solomon's uh, uh, go there seven, right? And uh, wisdom of Solomon seven twenty four. Oh, okay. Seven, uh, start at 7 okay. and go to 12 just to tighten up on the point because you mentioned it, right? Because uh, it's important. Seven. That's who, we're, that's who we're, we're glorifying, the Lord's knowledge and you. wisdom and His Spirit. I got it. Right, you got it? Yeah. Yeah. Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 12. And I rejoice in them all because wisdom goeth before them, and I knew not that she was the mother of them. I learned diligently and do communicate her liberally. I do not hide Salakil, her Salakil, brother, start from 7 to 12. Salakil, chapter 7, the 7th seven. verse to the 12th verse. Just to tighten the point for the con. Wisdom 7 and 7. Wherefore I prayed and understanding was given me. I called upon what? Yahweh. What? Prayed. What? Wherefore I prayed oh. and understanding was given me. So that's going into that mercy yeah. that we talk about, right? Thanks. God had mercy on, hey, on his prophets only. Right? And you don't know what they go through. Right? Go ahead. I Let call that be a lesson for those of you at home, man. You know, don't, don't overthink your situations. You know, whether you're locking or you're yep. and you don't overthink them. Just kneel down and pray to the Heavenly Father. You, you have His name and you have the Son's name. Pray mm -hmm. and then do whatever you got to do on your part and the rest will be fulfilled, man. Oh. It needs to be that clear and that simple because we're coming to time where that's all you're going to have. Well, really, you should be praying um, the, 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 what our forefathers prayed. Well, the Hebrew is our stuff that we pray is vanity. Yeah, our, yeah, our so That's why everything's right in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Bible. That's why the, uh, the brother over there in uh, Maryland there, uh, hmm. all their uh, Madanan over there, that um, deciphers the, the prayers from the Hebrew. Yeah. Uh, only there for this place until like they shut off the internet. Get it while you can. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you guys end his prayers there. Right. You feel better about yourself, and he he does the work for you, right? Yeah. Most has the spirit on that brother. Yeah. The prayers are in the book. Uh, go into Psalms 121. Right, you go down the other one. Yeah, the curses, right? Yeah. Our, 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 those are the prayers you should be uh, using. Praying just means bang. Right? Uh, pleading as how, how Yahweh was pleading with us. Wherefore I prayed and understanding was given me. I called upon Yahweh and the spirit of wisdom came to me. Right, so going to the other, you can't pray for vanity. But clearly in this situation, Solomon prayed and wisdom was given to him. You gotta, you gotta decipher what vanity, what, what vanity is, and what yeah. praying for something righteous or like wisdom is. The yeah, Solomon, yeah, yeah. the Lord came to him and told him, "I'll give you whatever you want." He could have asked for whatever, whatever he wanted, but he asked for wisdom. He understood what position he was in. He was in the position of what he had to carry. He had to, he had to rule a whole nation after his father. And he even said that, like, I, need, I need the wisdom to move these people. Some of them are unruly, some of them are like this, some of them are like that. I need the wisdom properly to rule them. That was, that was, that was, that was uh, practical to ask for. So, you know, that's not vanity. I, pref Salaki, I preferred her before scepters and thrones and esteemed riches to status. Nothing, right. Nothing in right. right. Scepters and thrones. Status. Right? This is not about this wisdom, this knowledge. You don't, you don't receive this wisdom and knowledge so you can have a better status in this world. Actually, you get it so that you can be proved of, of those sins, of those spirits. Because the scriptures say that what wisdom puffed it up. A lot of men have gotten this knowledge, and now they're walking around like, they, like, like, like Nate, like they did it of their own selves. This is not. This is not. Again. We're, we're pilgrims, right? We're traveling through 
into a righteous place. I'm not here to prosper. All right? The only thing you're going to be prospering is in the knowledge, in the understanding. That's where you should be prospering. This is Romans chapter 8, verse 5, and it says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after are after the spirit the things of the spirit for the carnal mind the carnal minded is death but the spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity and against enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god neither indeed can be right right so we this truth we can't be focusing on the things of the world too much we have to pray to stay in the spirit God. Most of the time, right? Because we God. do get tried with demons. That's right. You know? That's right. Like all brothers, you know, different different demons that are sent to, 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 to try you. Yep. You know? Yep. Sometimes you might think it's easy. Yeah, and yeah. The Lord is dealing with you and all of that, but yeah. you can't you can't lose focus, man. Because yeah. right. it's, it's real, it's real, man. It's not a joke. Yeah, it's true. Easier said than done. You just gotta pray that the Lord right. keeps you. Right. <laughs> you keep, keep you know, keep, Fight, keep right. a spiritual wow. mind, like just have that spiritual mindset because it's not easy. I chuckled because you said sometimes. So yeah. Sometimes, said sometimes. sometimes no, 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 it's a good point. It's yeah. a great point. Some, sometimes demon comes to tell you it's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here. Wow. It also says the weapons of our warfare are yeah. not carnal, but spiritual. Yeah. You gotta stay spiritual to fight. Neither compared. Neither compared. Salakia, wisdom seven and nine. Neither compared I unto her any precious stone, because all gold in respect of her is as a little sand, and silver shall be counted as clay before her. I loved her above health and beauty and chose to have her instead of light. For the light that cometh from her never goeth out. All good things together came to me with her and innumerable riches in her hands. And I rejoiced in them all because wisdom goeth before them and I knew not that she was the mother of them. Simply put, man, straightforward. Right, that's, what, that's our desire is wisdom, you know? <laughs> right, but uh, yeah, we're always gonna, she tells us, uh, Somewhere else there, I believe in wisdom. It's even more important that you obtain wisdom because you know, obviously you're an Israelite to find out that you're not like unto the other other nations, but always wanting and right. all of that, right? right. So the um, scripture you had uh, quoted there, I mean, you read out uh, the quote and uh, it said uh, silver is as clay. That, that's wow. That's the spirit I was just. But once you had the wisdom. <laughs> You know, when we're in the, in the next kingdom, we don't got to go and go and pick up items and stuff like that. Just going to be. We can bring it out of thin air. We got spiritual powers, man. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. how it's going to give us everything, man. Yeah, yeah, everything, yeah. So, man. Went right inside, the spirit went right inside my head and you pulled it out, said it that way. Yeah. Don't <laughs> gotta go ask for RFN notes and all this bullshit. Right? I got a good piece of uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 19 and 20. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law and the knowledge of his omnipotency. What? Did you yeah, hear that? That's beautiful. Omnipotency. Wow. Omnipotency. Look up omnipotency. Read that again. Brother. Read that again, brother. Look, I just turned on my phone and it was there. Yeah. I didn't even look this up. That's it's the spirit. spirit. It's the spirit. Yeah, uh, Ecclesiastes 19 and 20. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law. The performance! All That's right, what's jumping right. out on me, going back right. to what we said earlier, or ago, about faith. Right. Right? Faith, and you mentioned that another word. Right. And you made a good point, because you said when you come to this truth, you get this wisdom, you learn your Israelites, you learn you're different from the heathens. Right? You're different from the heathens. The heathens are in a BC state of mind, and so are a lot of Israelites too. Yeah, so the heathens are in a beastly state of mind, and so are a lot of Israelites too. So when you come to this, you get this wisdom, you learn that you're different from them because what separates you and them is instruction, the performance of the law, order. You know, and that's 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 paramount in this society because there's no order here. There's lawless 
a rebellion. Over at Kale. Or over at Kale, that's right. Uh, okay, uh, the fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law, right. and the knowledge of his omnipotency. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You got the definition? Got it. Okay, omnipotence in the etymology, unlimited divine power, almighty power, powerful, almighty. Uh, and that's why Adam was ruling over, Adam was the first king and priest on the earth. That's why he was ruling over all the other all the other nations back then, because he had knowledge of what? Read it again. Okay, omnipotence is um, unlimited divine power. He had that because he had instructions that he was following. Right? Uh, we're doing the same thing on this side so we can get mm. that unlimited divine power. <laughs> Yo, go ahead. Um, an almighty power, uh, omni is all and potent, potent in the, I think it's the Greek, it's potentus, yeah. is powerful, potent. Uh, let's yeah. see. This Very attribute. Pure. Okay, so this attribute is in the theology differentiated from the abstract idea of omnipotence, understood as the capability of doing anything, whatever, without limitation from moral consideration. That's it, man. That's what, that's what we want to be at. That's where we started. Going back to Adam, we started. The scriptures tell you that ye are gods, but you will die like the princes of men. We started in that state, we want to come back to that state, but we're going to come back to that state even better than we started. Yeah, before, before, in other words, before, a hey, before sin and suffering was permitted. You mentioned it. Huh? What, that, we want to go back to that state, the divine yes, state. That yes. Yahweh Shai is in there. Well, I just need to go on that. Yeah. I just need to go on that. Verse 21, if a servant say to his master, I will not do as it pleases thee, Though afterward he do it, he angereth him that nourished him. Right. 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 Yeah. Because you were supposed to do it. Right. Right. The, the knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. Neither at any time the counsel of sinners prudence. Yeah. Because they don't teach you to fear the Lord. Yeah. The knowledge of wickedness does not teach you to fear the Lord. It teaches you to love yourself and to make your own decisions. Uh, no matter what your conscience tells you. Because you know what? Even if Israel doesn't have this understanding, the majority of Israel doesn't have this understanding, they still have a conscience that's in their head telling them you shouldn't be doing this. Common sense. Con. But, <laughs> right, right, which is Israel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. it's exactly. not common. Right. And, but because they don't have, you know, the faith, they're not, they don't believe in you, how about Shimon Shad, they don't adhere to that, to that, uh, that voice telling them, yo, you shouldn't be sleeping with another man's woman. You know that's off. Every Israelite that does that knows that's off. Because yeah. no, you don't need no breakdown in the scriptures. But because you don't have faith in Heavenly Father, which makes you lack fear, you go ahead and do it anyways when you know you're off. I mind just re quickly re directed back to the Chicago thing with Jake there. But yeah. Because you, cause you mentioned the word self, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're left to self, which is destruction. Yeah. Willful child. Eh? The song says you're heading for self destruction. If you know if you know anything about Miami Vice, that was one of the theme songs. And uh, anyway, go ahead, brother. Okay, so uh, this is two more. Uh, there is a wickedness and the same an, an abomination, mm -hmm. and there is a fool wanting in wisdom. He that has small understanding and fear of Yahweh is better than one that has much wisdom and transgresses the law of the Most High. No, a whole bunch of understanding. Is that what it said, brother? No, 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 really. Like everything else? Uh, What's that? The tree is falling? It says, yeah. he that has small understanding. He that has small understanding. He that has small understanding <laughs> and fear of Yahweh is better than one that has much wisdom and transgresses the law of the Most High. <laughs> okay. right. Yeah, right. Now, the reason why I'm harping on that is because the apostles always tell us, right? Hey, 100% of the truth is 1%. Yeah. But you won't understand yeah. that for you people who don't know. But these yeah. men do. Go ahead, brother. Oh, that was it. That was it. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you have you have a lot of uh, priests and you have a lot of uh, learned men out here who know the scriptures you know, from front to back. They can quote every scripture, but yet they don't apply the scriptures. Right. Mm -hmm. So a guy that doesn't know much, he'll apply what he knows to the best of his ability, right. and he'll get far greater results than the guy that knows everything. Right. The Lord is dealing with that guy. Yeah. Right. And Bruce Lee said a quote: "I, I don't fear, I 
fear a man that practices one kick a thousand times than a thousand kicks at one time. Right? Like going to that man that only has a little knowledge. Exactly. Only has a little knowledge or he's given what he's given, but he over and over again he's mastering that one thing. You know? Well you brought it out earlier, you said uh, uh, knowledge puff it up. Yeah. So that speaks that starting or eventually that spirit of pride in yourself right. falls on you. Yeah, the Lord gave it to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The most important part is going into that omnipotency is that you don't consider that the Lord is everywhere. He's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. He's in power in all things. Yeah. That's why some of the, the disciples, they left the commonwealth of Israel back in the day because the commonwealth, they knew who they were in the spirit. Yeah. So you know what? They didn't want to listen to him because they thought they had everything. Yeah. So that's why it says, I, you know, I thought to provoke emulation with them, right. which is jealousy by going on to the Israelite foreigners. That's right. Because the Israelite foreigners, they were more humble. Yeah. yeah. And they were actually trying to learn. Yeah. Right? You only knew what they knew? Yeah. Go ahead, bro. So it's Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 19. This is going to judgment. It says, Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. And thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken Yahweh thy power, and that my fear is not in thee. Right. Say Yahweh power. Read that again. Um, yeah. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 19 says, Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. Right. And you guys, you guys have any ideas as to why that is? Because thy own wickedness will correct you. Well, the laws. Is it because we know the laws? Because yeah. we know the laws when we go off, we get convicted right away. Or we just get convicted. Right, right. We know it's wrong. Yeah, so, so the elect. And yeah. then what about two thirds? And what about Esau? Yep. How is their wickedness going to uh, correct them? Because of judgment. It's just because of judgment. There's always judgment. That's why the scripture in Ecclesiastes says, Most I require that has, that right. has passed. Right, right. right. That, that precept came out, yeah. Right? There's judgment. So Esau, when you go into correction of his mind, he, the scriptures tell you his inward thought, thought and says, it's how this shall uh, last forever. So he thinks the new world already, that he's going to establish it and it's going to run forever. But the correction is the judgment that the Heavenly Father is bringing. He's going to come to find that, yo, I was wrong. You know? Because even though that you're born this time, you don't know what you did back then, and the most is judging you now off of what you did on your last uh, trip. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah your or last your trip. last um, estate. Or yeah. Last estate. Whatever you want to um, apply yeah. to. Yeah. So the most high requires, that's why, that's why when Yahushai came, as Yahushai, he was being judged off of what he did as Solomon. Right. Right. And Adam. And uh, yeah, yeah, on that line. And it's being corrected, as it says in the scripture, because there's no fear. They don't have the fear of the Lord in them. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and the rest yeah. of it says, no there. Remember, it's yeah. judgment. Sorry. Uh, you said yeah. the hours I got punished for what he did at Solomon. Yeah. 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 His purpose was. And Adam. Isaac. No, I don't know. Well, anyhow. But yeah, go ahead. When he, when he, um, what he did on the cross. When he, the punishment that he endured while he was on the cross. That was for what he did at Solomon and Adam, not to redeem his people. On top yeah. of the yeah. redeem, uh, the people. people. Where is that? that. Uh, what? Where is that? His yeah, that, he, that, that he's getting punished yeah. for what he did at Solomon and Adam. Well, you get that understanding. You get that understanding. Well, actually, uh, uh, it's in Second Kings. Yeah. First, it's First, first Kings. It's first Kings. Yeah, yeah, bring it out. Bring it out. Okay, this is seven. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is First Kings chapter eleven. Right. Um, I'll start at uh, verse 8. I'll start at verse 7, sorry. It's not good. Um, and then did Solomon build a high place in Chemosh, an abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Right. Verse 8, and likewise did he uh, for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord Yahweh was angry with Solomon because his heart or his mind was turned away from the Lord thy power of Israel, which had appeared to him twice, and which commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not which the Lord commanded. Right. And, 
right now. That's good. Now read the one in. Uh, that's actually in the spirit. You set that up nicely. Yeah. Uh, it's. Uh, hold on. Stripes. No stripe. I'll beat him with the stripes of men. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That's Second Kings. Yeah. Second Kings. Uh, fourteen. Or seven and fourteen. Is that second? Samuel. Second Samuel. Uh, hold on. Second Samuel seven. Come on, get it. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 14. So that yeah. was in spirit. You already read what he did to go off at Solomon. Yeah. Set him up. Set him up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second Samuel chapter 7, verse 14. Mm -hmm. I will be his father. And start at like start at 10. Start at 10? Okay. Yeah. Um, second Just to Samuel. Get the context. Uh, the Lord, is, is Nathan the prophet, is telling David that you're not going to build a temple. Your son, Solomon, is going to build a temple for me. David wanted to build a temple. So he had the blueprints. So that's the context. Go ahead. Okay, Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them that they may dwell in the place of their own and move no more. Neither their children of wickedness shall afflict them any more as before time. All right. As... Um, verse 11 as and as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to, to rest from all thy enemies also the Lord Yahweh telleth thee that he will make thee in, in, in house and when thy days be fulfilled that thy shalt, thou shalt be thou shalt sleep with thy fathers I will set up thy seed after thee which shall proceed out of my thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Right. Verse 13, He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Right. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If right. he commit iniquity, he I will chasten him out of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Right. Did that happen to Solomon? No. So then, spiritual, um, uh, what does the Apostle Tzvar says? Extrapolation, where you connect the precepts, that happened to Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai's kingdom was told that, was told to us that would last forever. And he says, I I will be his father. So you know that's Yahweh speaking of Yahweh Shai. Right. I will be his father. Right. Okay, the spirit that was in the vessel of Solomon was Yahweh Shai. I got a yeah, was there more than that? That was it, eh? That was straight? That was it. That was it, yeah. Okay, you know what? Yeah, I got one. Go, go ahead, brother. Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 7, verse 27. I'll start at 25. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto the Most High by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, mm -hmm. who needeth not daily as those, high, as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, oh, and then for the people's. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. For this he did once <laughs> when he offered up himself. Right. We didn't even need anything else but that. Read <laughs> yeah. that one more time. Read that, read that point. Read that point. Read that point. Read that point. Read one more time. Hebrews 7 verse 27. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. That's it, man. Woo. Beautiful precept. Not much. Straight. I got one. Last one. Acts 2 and 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that Yahweh had sworn with an oath to him, going back to 2 Samuel, mm -hmm. that of the fruit of his loins, according to his flesh, he would raise Yahweh Shai to sit on his throne. Oh, so they knew. When, so they, they, read, knew. when they went back in the scrolls, they read 2 Samuel. They put Samuel, two, two together. And like, this, this is Yahweh Shai. Yeah. So that's the spirit. That's beautiful. Come on. So we're going to close up this ministry. All right. Lord Williams, edifying the whole full left. We're going to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh. 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 Yahwe
and uh, double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone who rule well. And as tired this word in truth and sincerity, and peace and mercy to the whole full elect that also pushes this word across the four points of the earth in truth and sincerity. As well as you little my sisters that believe, peace and mercy to you. All right, we're gonna say a bob of ball. And low will until next week, we say shalom to the whole full elect. Shalom to the whole full elect.